Welcome. In this video, we're going to use the processing programming language to create a simple analog clock application. I have several different goals when we work with this. The first is obviously to create the clock. So we're going to make a simple analog clock with hour, minute, and second hands. Uh, you can see a depiction of that over here on the right side. The long line is our second hand. Medium line is minutes. This is our hour hand. Um, in the process, we're going to take advantage of processing's built-in time methods, uh, obviously in addition to some drawing methods, like for drawing circles and lines and putting text on the screen. But we're also going to use polar coordinates in order to determine the endpoints of our lines, which will help uh, us think about the, uh, the drawing a little bit more easily. Before we get started on the pieces that we'll need to make this work, let's go ahead and take a look at the finished product a quick demo of the operating app. Okay, this is our finished product, our preview of what things are going to look like at the end. Um, as you can see, it's not necessarily the most beautiful thing in the world, but making it pretty is something that you could do later on if you want. Um, you can see that the second hand ticks every second. Um, when it makes one full revolution of the clock face, the minute hand clicks up by one minute and also the hour hand moves up by one sixtieth of the distance between the hours on the clock face. So it works pretty much like an analog clock would be expected to work. Alright, so let's start to look at the pieces that we would need in order to make this happen. Okay, so maybe the first thing we should talk about is how are we going to get the system clock information, that is the current hour, minute, and second, in order to make our clock display the correct time. Well, as it turns out, processing has some built-in methods that allow you to query the system clock quite easily. So for instance, the second method gets you the current second, and the return value of that method call is a number between 0 and 59, an integer. Likewise, there's a minute method call, and when we call that method, we get a number, an integer, in the closed range between 0 and 59. The only one that's going to be a little bit difficult for us is the hour method because it gets the current hour in uh, military time, if you will. It gives us a number between 0 and 23 inclusive, an integer in that range. And so since our clock displays uh, 12 hours rather than 24 hours, we need to do something about that. So what we'll do is take advantage of the modulus operator. We'll just take our hour mod 12 and that'll get us what we need. So as soon as it rolls over to uh, 12, uh, which would be 12 noon, uh, the hour would effectively be zero again. In other words, back at the top of the clock. And that'll all be explained as we start looking at our coordinate system in a little bit. Okay, so that's not so bad. Um, in terms of the graphics, really it's not so bad either because each hand of the clock will be a line. Obviously the clock face is a circle and we have uh, some text pieces around for the numbers on the face of the clock. No big deal. Um, except when you come to draw the line. Uh, one end of the line for each hand will be at the center of the display window, and that's easy to determine. The other end, on the other hand, is not so easy because it's moving and it's following a circular path. So. If you recall, processing has a sort of modified Cartesian coordinate system where our 0, 0 is in the upper left-hand corner. The x-axis extends positively to the right, and the y-axis goes down to the positive, okay, which is what's a little bit odd. And so if we were going to draw, let's say, a second hand here, at any particular moment in time, we need to know the endpoint here and the other endpoint there, the coordinates of those two points. So again, this would just be the center of the display window. That's easy. Um, and then this one, well, once we have it for one value, what happens when we tick to another second? Because now it's going to be following some circular path here and moving on. And so those coordinates then for this end are following some circular path. And, you know, we could certainly do the geometry for that. Uh, it's not an insurmountable problem, but to me it just seems a little bit icky. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and use polar coordinates. Uh, no, not like that. Not polar coordinates as in north or south pole, not Santa Claus or penguins, 
but mathematical polar coordinates, which will make this, at least for me, easier to think about. So let's take a look at the idea of polar coordinates.